everyone. So if you remember in our last video about biology, we explored about the story of the cells, like here, and ATP and ADP. We also explored shallowly about the different kinds of organs in our cells. But today I want to go deeper into that and talk about a process that's very important in bacteria called diffusion. And more about that later on. But just to tell you that today is part of a series of lectures and I'll do more about physics, maths and chemistry and biology because they're all related. Like biology is structured on chemistry and that's structured on physics and that's structured on maths. So I'll make them in the later weeks. So just to start off, let's start off with the nucleus. And there's the nucleus, it's that purple thing with that dark purple thing and those um, things that look like spaghetti. And those spaghetti-like things are the DNA. And DNA is the genetic code for all life. And DNA has four bases, A, T, C, and G. And they all stand for adenine, which is A, thymine, which is T, and G for guanine, and, and I think that's it. So that's all of the bases, and you might see DNA written like that, and then there's those curvy bits, you might see it like that, and that is what it is, but there's actually a, mole a molecular structure to it, but that's all you have to know about DNA. So DNA looks like that, and if you look more on that picture, you can see a tiny opening right there. And that tiny opening is called a nuclear pore. And that nuclear pore is very important because, um, wait, yeah, because that nuclear pore allows ribosomes to work. And, and ribosomes are those tiny, tiny red things up close. And the ribosomes are very essential with the nuclear pores because from the nuclear pores, there's something called RNA. And RNA is kind of like DNA, like that's DNA, D -N -A. and then RNA, RNA is like DNA, but it's only one strand, like DNA, there's two of them, D is deoxy, and D stands like for two, for two, and then RNA is, it doesn't have anything, so it's only one, so RNA looks like this. And there's only one of it. And RNA is very special because RNA has a type called mRNA, which is messenger RNA. And that can actually help the proteins. That can help make proteins in the ribosomes. And I have a fun fact that um, there's actually this protein that takes three hours to make a single one. And it takes three hours to make a single one. So. If you start a timer from now and the mRNA is signaling to the ribosomes to make that protein, then you have to wait three hours and then it's done. But that's only one molecule of a protein. So that's a very exciting fun fact for me. And if you look over here, there's the Golgi apparatus. And that might look quite complex because you never see Golgi um, anywhere in the cell, but it does a job quite simple. There's this Golgi vesicle, and vesicles in cells, they can transport things around the cell. And the Golgi vesicles can transport packages. Like when you have a parcel around your house, someone sends it to you, and then you can open it, and it's full of goods. Um, the Golgi vesicle is like that, but it's goods for a cell. And that travels along with these things. And you know what those lines things are? They're called microtubules, um, intermediate filaments and microfilaments and they are the and they together they form the cytoskeleton and the cytoskeleton helps keep it shape like when you have a skyscraper i'm going to rub that out skyscrapers i'm going to replace that skyscrapers don't usually have just one structure right a really tall skyscraper you don't have it like that because it might be vulnerable to wind so you Draw a skeleton, you make a skeleton. It's not a real skeleton, but it will do. And that will make it stronger against wind. Like when there's wind blowing in this direction, then that um, might be able to stop it. 
and that might be able to stop it coming there and the same as the opposite so that is what makes the skyscraper strong but what makes the cell strong is the same but for a cell so there's a cell right here then there's the nucleus in the middle there's the microtubule which looks like churros that i once got in winter wonderland before like a long time ago the cytoskeleton helps keep its shape and the cytoskeleton is also a road for Golgi vesicles. And Golgi vesicles are linked to secretory vesicles. And this secretory vesicle right over there is shaped so that um, it looks like fingers like that, prongs or something like that. And then the fingers try to take in something, except that that's secretory. So it's gonna put something out. And there's a process called phagocytosis. And phagocytosis is in phagocytes when we want to eat a bacteria. So phagocytosis works like this in steps. Step one is to get um, these projections called pseudopodia. And pseudopodia um, are what will cover a bacteria. There's a bacteria and the bacteria is about to get engulfed by it. And step two is to cover it. So the bacteria is now stuck in the cell. And step three is to actually put the bacteria inside the cell. Because like over there, um, if you imagine the secretory vesicle done phagocytosis, it would try to trap the bacteria before it could get away. And then it would pull that closer towards it. And then the next step for here is to cool in different things. And those things um, are the, um, the lysosomes. And the lysosome contain enzymes. And enzymes will eat up anything in there, like here. Those red dots that you might see, that contrast with the black ground, they are the enzymes. They're supposed to eat anything up. The peroxisomes also help too because the peroxisomes, they um, bring in some toxins to kill the bacteria. So first the peroxisomes kill the bacteria, next the lysosomes devour the bacteria, and then there's the vacuole, and the, vac and the vacuole is the trash can of the cell. And I'm not saying that the vacuole is bad, I'm saying that it's the, it's the bin for the cell. So if there's any waste, it puts it in the vacuole and the secretory vesicle will take out any waste if there's too much of it. So what happens here is that um, I'm, I'm going to draw, I'm going to make some symbols temporarily. The um, peroxisome, one that has toxin, I'm going to draw it like that because it's an axis if you tilt it sideways. And then the, um, the lysosomes, they contain lots of enzymes to eat it up. I'm going to draw it as a red dot. And the vacuole, um, I'm just going to draw it as this giant thing that looks like a steak barbecue. It's been a fry bowl. The pat patty of a burger. So what happens is that there's going to be a hole in this. There's going to be a hole in this. Next, it's going to open it up. And then next, the um, lysosomes and peroxisomes rush inside and then the peroxisomes they kill the bacteria with toxins and the lysosomes they eat it up and then the, it closes again and then the vacuole will merge with that empty space so that the waste gets put in the vacuum hole. and that's and can I tell you why they don't put it to it because then it's not eating it because cells don't really eat stuff like we do. We eat like meats, we eat plants and everything else like that. But cells, they don't eat bacteria. So they use the secretory vesicle to do that. And that step is called phagocytosis. There's, um, so I've explored about those three and that. And then let's move on to something that you might remember from last, um, yesterday's video the mitochondria and the mitochondria is the powerhouse of a cell it gives the energy of a cell so what it does is very complex but all you need to know is that it gets energy for the cell by using atp it creates a tiny bit of body heat a 
tiny, it gives a tiny bit of heat, and then that's what I experience with body heat like here. I hope it's not too hot, too cold. I, I feel the power of the mitochondria in the cells, billions, I don't know, thousands and millions and trillions of them inside my neck, and I feel the heat of approximately 38 degrees Celsius. And the mitochondria generates heat like that. And about these intermediate filaments, I want to say that the intermediate filaments, they can also be called actin filaments. And the actin filaments are pretty much the same thing, but a different name. There's the rough endoplasmic reticulum, which is the home for all of the ribosomes. You might think of the ribosomes as, um, you know, like a fish. A the fish and the rough endoplasmic reticulum is the fish tank. So the rough endoplasmic reticulum around here would store all of it. And the rough endoplasmic reticulum stores it so that there are, there's a place where there's going to be metabolic processes. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum looks, does, and does the same thing like the rough endoplasmic reticulum. So you can say that the rough one and the smooth one are basically the same. Except that one has more ribosomes and one has less. There's, and there's the centrosome, and the centrosome looks um, like quite familiar to me because I remember eating churros on Winter Wonderland, right? I know, three years ago. And then it looks like that, but there's one that goes sideways, and there's one that you can see the cross section view of it. And the function of a centrosome is it's supposed to make the cytoskeleton, and cyto basically means related to a cell. So that's why all of these things that is around it, the medium inside it, is called cytoplasm. It's like ectoplasm, but for cells, right? And the centrosome, it will help in duplication of the cells. Like when the cells have grown enough and they want to duplicate, then the cells want to do this. I'm gonna draw um, a picture of it. Two of these black markers, I don't know why. Um, there's that is when they're about to split apart, okay? When they're splitting apart, I'm gonna draw, that's where they want to rip up. And then this is the chromosomes, and the chromosomes are how they store DNA, like that. So that is half of a chromosome. And then the other half of the chromosome, this is oversized, it's not usually like that, but um, here it is for just an example. So what it is, is, goes like that. Now, how do the cells make sure that it's equal? Because imagine if there's one with too little DNA and one with an uneven amount of DNA, that one with too little DNA dies and then one with um, just more DNA, but it doesn't have enough to equally send out its genetic things, then it's going to die. So we want to make sure that they're set equally. So we have something called chromatin and chromatin you see chromatin is attached to this sense of all chromosomes and it's extremely important because chromatin is one of the most you know vital things in cell splitting up or else there's going to be more deaths in the cells so that's why the chromatin in blue here would do that but how does the chromatin split up it does it like we use like cut with a knife or something? No, this actually the centrosome, and the centrosome are those two churros that look together, they're stuck together with something like glue. They're like that. One of them is like that, and then there's another, like that. And those actually have these um, microtubules, the intermediate filaments and the microfilaments connected together. So that, it will connect to this, connect to that, and connect to that. It's not usually as messy as this, but it's just a drawing, right? Then it will connect. And then when it splits apart, it rips apart the chromosomes to make it like that. And that's pretty much it for the whole thing. And I forgot the plasma membrane. The plasma membrane also helps keep the shape. It's the basis of it. And the cytoskeleton, which is all of the intermediate filaments, the microtubules, the microfilaments, they also help it. And there's one thing about diffusion. And diffusion is basically like osmosis. And then 
diffusion would mean that it always wants to stay equal. Like if you have this experiment where you put sugar, wait, maybe you can send that in the comments. If you put sugar in water, then the sugar won't always stay put as a cube. It will always want to spread out. And that's what diffusion is. Everything wants to be equal. So um, I think that's it because um, um, I think I've talked for a long enough time. Um, and I think I'll continue next time. And here's a tip. Next time it's related towards um, the vacuole, the peroxisome, the lysosome, and phag phagocytosis. Can you guess what it is? Tip, it's a cell and it's a system that keeps you healthy. Okay, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope you enjoyed the next one also. Stay tuned for the next one. Bye.